Hi, welcome to Mailbag. Yes, I'm back on camera. Usually I'm not on camera at the start of Mailbag, but it's a good opportunity to give you a small update. Uh, for those who have been following on the forum and on my blog website, you'll know that I'm getting quite close to getting my live streaming setup all happening. I'm going to be using uh, YouTube Live. I did a test yesterday and 150 uh, people uh, and just impromptu uh, turned up to my live show and I have finally got my Tagano microscope uh, working, capturing that. I've just got to get a little bit more gear but it all seems to work well so I'll be able to do some really decent uh, live shows soon in full HD and also multi-camera set up and switch between them because I've decided to use my my good cameras, my Canon HF-G10 and also my uh, Canon HF-M400 which is here somewhere. Over there, two good, really uh, good Canon cameras. They've got HDMI output, so I'm going to capture that directly. I'm going to have a dedicated streaming server uh, machine, which then uh, can switch between those main cameras, maybe some other webcams, and also the Tagano microscope as well. And sort of do all that live and put it through uh, live streaming switching software called Wirecast and stream it directly onto YouTube. It should be fantastic. Anyway, a couple of people mentioned that uh, on that show that they'd like to see the mailbag done live. So if you want to see the mailbag done live, then uh, please leave it in the comments because I can uh, certainly do that. The only issue with uh, the live shows is that probably they're not as polished as you would get a regular mailbag. So maybe I can do them more frequently. Like at the moment, I've got 12 items have turned up. Okay, there's no way I'm going to get through them all in this mailbag. But now, once I've got all my live streaming things set up and I'm all ready to go, all the cameras and all the wiring and all the server and the software is all in place, I'll be able to just boom at a moment's notice when I get an mailbag items in or new gear in, I might get something on eBay or something like that, I can just hit stream and uh, away we go, live. So that should be really good. So my regular contents are not going to change, but hopefully you'll see some more of that live stuff once I'm all set up. Got to rearrange some of the lights in here as well, getting some glare from the microscopes and all that sort of jazz. So yeah, um, I'm certainly going to be making use of that new uh, 8 meg upload bandwidth that I got on my new internet connection. So anyway, enough of that. Here we go, onto the mailbag. Oh, a lot of people uh, went excited when I post the photo of this. It looks like somebody sent me a bottle of wine, or is it? I don't know, it doesn't quite feel like a bottle of wine. Anyway, I could probably balance it on my little pinky. No, I can't, not that good a balance. But let's go, mailbag time. Now first up, my humble apologies to Jake. Gerton, not only for my pronunciation of his name, but also for the fact that this one has unfortunately been sitting here for uh, four months. So I really, oh, more than that, almost five months. Sorry, it got lost in all the rubble that was the EEV blog lab. But now it's quite uh, clean, and yes, it is actually clean. Take a look. There's floor space. Look at that. I've got my bean bags back. Everything's nice and clean. Once again, for those not following on Twitter, you would have uh, seen this sort of um, stuff. So it is clean, and I've got all my new uh, stuff over there in the uh, in the lab. I've got all my soundproofing and uh, all that sort of stuff in the studio in there, and some new rack space. So there you go. It's all happening here. So <laughs> sorry, Jake. This one actually got lost. So let's open it up and see what's inside. And yes, I'm no longer going to read uh, the uh, contents because that. Whoop! Ooh! Investigate numerous breakings of vendor. What? What? Oh! Oh! There we go. Oh, he's got his um, call card. There we go. V E two T Q X. Excellent. And there you go. The date. Mm, yeah. Um, and that's not uh, Australianized date. That's American date. So that's January. <gasps> Oops. Sorry. Fantastic, so he's a hand, obviously, and is that a, it's a note, there you go, I don't care what day it is, four hours is four hours, hmm, and Jake is a licensed ham radio operator, 15 years radio electronics, he loves to rip apart electronics, he's 57 years young, awesome, and there he is, from the land above you, so let's have a look, and, uh, uh. Oh. It's a, it's a, 
it's an uh, it's an impulse sealer. Oh, one of those uh, tape sealing machines. Um, I he wants me to do uh, tear downs on these suckers. So look at that. I mean, there's not much in it. It's just going to be a heating element, I suspect. So yeah, one of those sealers. You put your product in the bag, and you put your bag in here, and you go clunk, and it just seals the bag like that. Um, nothing fancy. There's just a heating uh, control on here, and uh, the imp the name impulse uh, sealer. It probably gives the game away. It probably only heats up when you make contact and you can hear, you can hear the micro switch down in here. Ready? There we go. Like that. So as soon as it goes down, it doesn't heat until you give it that last doop, like that. So nothing, oh, isn't that fun? Yeah, not much inside at all. Just a big uh, C-Core transformer there by the looks of it. There's that micro switch uh, down there, which you can see the plate come in and click like that and there's basically uh, two contacts on here here's the heating element comes up through this uh, screw terminal over here and also the other one down there and you can see those wired down in there there's one part of it and the other one's wired right down the bottom in there which you can't see there's a tiny little uh, circuit on there with a read relay control in the uh, temperature not much else I see a yeah, there's a resistor and a couple of caps in there and uh, something else. Pretty crude. So yes, presumably that's uh, not on all the time. It would only come on when you um, hit the button like that. I guess the uh, this down here, the sealer, uh, is, you know, once it gets up to temperature, then it cuts it out. I'm not sure how long you have to actually leave it there, but it probably doesn't take long to seal a bit of plastic to melt that plastic. So yeah, pretty basic. Let's see what else we have in here. Uh, and we have a, another crusty old phone. I've got a, a couple of ugh, audio vox. Wow, tri mode audio vox. Hands up who had one of those back in whenever it was. Still got the original battery pack. <clears throat> made in Japan. There you go. Geez, not made in China. Hmm. Wonder what the vintage of that sucker is. And it seems to be a CDM 9000 model uh, touted as AudioVox's first tri-mode web browsing mobile phone. Yes, you could browse the web on this sucker. Oh, goodness. Oh, how primitive. But I can remember a day before mobile phones, so this was state-of-the-art back then, kiddies. Anyway, I've got a, uh, a collection of uh, old mobile phones, so maybe I can do a bulk teardown of those. So thanks, Jake, and sorry about being late. Oh, I'm so embarrassed. It was sitting in a corner. Ah, oh, messy lab. Goodness. And next up, the wine box. Everyone wants to see what's in the wine box. It's not wine. I'm pretty darn sure it's just not heavy enough. From Dave Scott. Good on you, Dave. Fellow Aussie in Melbourne. Okay, here we go. Let's have a squiz. And uh, sorry, not enough wide angle on this sucker. Got a a note and pretty good protection. Oh, what is it? That's interesting. Phillips. Oh, wow, look at that. That looks like the eye of hell. <laughs> That's, that glows red. That'd be fantastic. What? What is that? I'll have to read the note. I'm sure a lot of people might know what hermetically sealed around there. Some sort of high voltage thing, a glass tube all sealed. Oh, interesting. Oh, intrigue. Enclosed is something to get you into more trouble with the US government. Awesome. Always looking for an opportunity there. Absolutely. I tried to sell it on eBay, but apparently Australians are banned from selling these items in Australia by US law. Really? Yeah, probably. Because we just bend over and suck up to the bloody Yanks. It's ridiculous. Seriously. eBay Australia sent in two very stern warning letters about it. Ooh. Anyway, it was originally bought from Oatly Electronics, who have sold lots of cool surplus stuff they have indeed they're based here in Sydney um, it's fragile so open carefully it doesn't have enough parts to run it needs some optics and 10,000 volts throw it in the bin if you want but careful of glass shards if you go dumpster diving thank you very much Dave excellent well he still didn't tell us what it is I'm sure some people are aware of what this sucker is why is it so uh, actually it's not some sort of it's some sort of sensor or something like that Perhaps I can see down in it. Oh, 
this is not for this is not a tear down for the mailbag this is definitely a separate tear down so I'll do some research and yes I checked and I guess it's obvious it's a first generation image intensifier tube hi I can see myself Ta-da! Terrific. Um, yeah, I, uh, basically, uh, night vision uh, optics. Uh, high voltage works on 14 kilovolts or thereabouts, and uh, apparently this one was incredibly uh, popular, probably still used uh, today in a lot of gear. And basically, yeah, it needs lenses uh, front and back. So we've got our uh, cathode on the front, and we've got a fluorescent uh, screen on the back. So we need optics on the front uh, to focus it, and also optics on the back as well. But you basically, you know, image in the front, you look out here, it's effectively uh, passive, apart from requiring the uh, 14, 14 kilovolts and a focus uh, voltage as well. Um, apart from those voltages, it's effectively um, an analog uh, night viewing um, scope and it has an effective resolution on the back of about one megapixel or thereabouts so you know even though it's not sort of a, a digital pixelated camera that's sort of like the equivalent uh, sort of you know uh, resolution of the thing effectively so that is really neat so yeah on its own not probably not a huge hugely useful to make it you know truly useful you need some optics but maybe I don't know um, people want to throw some ideas out there for experimentation or a teardown, but there's not much in it. It's got a, it's a vacuum tube, pretty much. I don't think there's a huge amount inside these things. So, I don't know. Let me know what you want to do with it. Thank you very much, Dave. That's awesome. Next up, I'm going to open this because it's from the, if I'm pronouncing it correctly, Pimeroni Pirate Crew. And anything to do with pirates is just awesome. So, that definitely gets opened. Aha, me mateys. Beautiful. I love it. Pirate crew. Pirates are good. Okay. Did you know there's a correlation between uh, the number of pirates and global warming? That's an in-joke for those uh, in the know. How do you bloody open these uh, ridiculous things? Oh, it's a pool thing, is it? Okay, we have a note. And, oh, lots of goodies in here. Oh, we've got some purple boards. They're proto boards. They come in handy. Awesome. Thank you very much. Element 14. It looks like we have an 8 gig Raspberry Pi. Fantastic. Ahoy! They've got a sticker. Terrific. Raspberry Pi. Fantastic. Look at that. Ta-da! Is that the new one? I've got a um I've got an older one. Oh, I've got a bunch of pirate stickers. Beautiful. Look at that, 8 gig Raspberry Pi, thank you very much. And the Piglo, the Piglo, made for Raspberry Pi. I wonder what it does. Contains LEDs, can be super bright, do not stare, painfully lit. Look, there we go, it's a little rotating, uh, the Piglo is a little, look, it rotates like that, and I guess it, uh, if you plug it in and run it, it uh, is going to run a, going to run a swirly pattern and that just uh, plugs into the Raspberry Pi. Presumably more proto boards. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Uh, looks like we have a Raspberry Pi disc and a Pi bow. The neat little layer case for your Raspberry Pi. Oh look, it's one of these uh, laser, cut, uh, laser cut cases. So you assemble the sucker and uh, that looks really neat. You assemble it and your Raspberry Pi is in a funky little case. I like it. And we have a mystery tin. What's it? Oh, ahoy! Ahoy! Look at these, the old uh, LED bubble. Are they LED bubble displays? I'd have to get the macro lens out and have a look in those. But old school, love it, dip package. And this is what I was talking about uh, right at the start, the glare from my overhead lights. You can see my overhead lights, so I've got to actually move them back behind me and not have any lights actually over the bench, un unless I need them to actually uh, work or something like that. So, yeah, it is one of those uh, little bubble seven-segment uh, displays. Four-way seven-segment. Classic. I love it. And, of course, they're really tiny, but when you light them up with the lens on top, that bubble lens, they do appear bigger than what they actually are on the die. 
Love these things. Yeah, I saw your mailbag with the Mattel racing game and thought you might like some of these cute little lead bubble displays, which they stock in their store. Awesome, you can buy it. There we go. I'll provide, as always, for the mailbag, I provide links to all the uh, stuff I can down in the description down below, so check them out. So you can still able to buy these lovely seven seg bubble displays. Oh, I love it. Ahoy. Look at that. Brilliant. Uh, also chucked in a Raspberry Pi in one of our uh, Pibo cases. I saw you a bit of a ninja kind of guy, so that's one I've gone for. There are also some other prototyping PCBs which we find dead useful to have on hand. Yes, you always got to have a good lab will always have, like, you know, just lots of little proto boards, vero boards, uh, you know, adapter boards and things like that on hand. Uh, we're a company of makers and educators who manufacture all our own products here in Sheffield. Awesome. We have a, oh, they have their own uh, pick and place assembly wave soldering laser cutters. Awesome. Excellent. Uh, we design and manufacture a few of our own products, the Pi Bow, the Pi Glow, the Pi Brella. Pi Hub, the Pi Cade, oh, they're Raspberry Pi mad, and also run an online store stocking a large range of stuff from Artifruit and all the rest. Excellent, thank you very much for the Pimeroni Pirate Crew. Thumbs up. Actually, this case is really quite nice. They're all individually numbered uh, 0, 0123, right up to 7 or 8 or something like that, and the Raspberry Pi just sits in there like that, and then you stack them all up. And I'll show you the finished product in a minute. And there is the finished product. I like it. That Raspberry Pi case. Look at that. Beautiful. It's got cutouts for nice wide cutouts so you can fit the plastic in there as well for the uh, micro USB there and for the um, uh, composite video output and the USB and the Ethernet. That is... Awesome! I love that case. Vent holes on the bottom, important. I'm not sure offhand how hot a Raspberry Pi uh, actually gets, but if you want to, you know, if you enclose that in there and don't have much uh, airflow, it could get uh, could get quite warm. Uh, ribbon cable expansion uh, coming out here, if that's for the camera, by the looks of it. They've got the little uh, symbols on there. I'm not up on all my latest Raspberry Pi stuff, and you could operate it with or without the top on. Look at that. That is terrific. I love that. All right, I've whacked in the SD card which came with it, and I'm going to uh, power the thing up. Got it plugged into HDMI onto my monitor here, and uh, where is the thing? Here we go. Let's give it a burl. See if it does anything. There's a light. I can see a light. Ta-da! Yes! Look at that! And what's it going to do? I don't know. I'm not... Uh, oh, hey! Refire... There we go! Raspberry Pi, it's booting up. Fantastic. There we go. I haven't used one for a long time. Very, very old one and it didn't uh, do anything useful. The start Raspberry and recommended. There we go. Arch do all sorts of weird and wonderful stuff. Terrific. And I just plugged a mouse into that and it works a treat. Here we go. We've got a Debian Wheezy port. I don't know. I'm not Penguin enough to know what that means. Uh, an Arch Linux port for ARM devices. Open Elec. Fast and user-friendly uh, Xbox Media Center distribution, Pydora, which is a Fedora remix. Oh, I, want, I presume all this stuff was on the uh, SD card, and uh, Raspberry and boot to scratch. Oh, excellent. Very fast and compact operating system. Which one do we want? I don't know. Let's just pick the open elec, because it sounds electronic-y. Can we just go? Hello, McFly. Install. There we go. Stores the operating system onto this SD card. Aha! There you go. So we can boot onto the SD card. Yeah, all you Raspberry Pi fans are going, you don't know what you're doing, Dave. And correct, I'm not into the Raspberry Pi, but that's awesome. It just works. So thanks guys, that's awesome stuff, and definitely uh, check them out, I love it when stuff is made in-house like that. In this case, in Sheffield in the UK. Beauty. And this one is enormous, doesn't say who it's uh, from, it's just for, it's just got the courier uh, company's distribution on here, so let's check it out. It's quite large and sort of, I don't know, there's sort of a box maybe with some other stuff as well. It looks like a, uh, an old DSP board. We've got ourselves a TI-320, classic TI-320 DSP. 
looks like it's uh, doing some uh, audio or something like that, some audio processing. Uh, we've got a note, we've got a whole bunch of stuff. <laughs> TMS320 DSP starter kit. We might, yeah, looks like we've got old starter kit contents. Let's have a look. Oh, a whole bunch of chips and ta da! One of these padded bags, which I hate because these have the. Uh, I've done this before, you tear them apart and this crap goes everywhere. Don't tear these things open. They're just awful, evil bags, these things. Uh -huh, it's from Andy, channel engineer on YouTube. He sent me some stuff before. Glad the Nixie tube survived the journey in the past mailbag. I was worried the glass would break. I was going to send an old Tektronix transistor diode curve tracer for a tear down, but the damn shipping was over 150 pounds. Yes, it would be. Those things are heavy. I'm surprised it was that cheap. Um, if you know of a cheaper way, no, I don't know. <laughs> um, yeah, it's just very expensive to ship stuff internationally. Anything over a kilo, you know, a kilo or two just gets ridiculously expensive. Fiber kit. Um, he's included the fiber kit. Been kicking out in years. Migrating from the drawer was purchased as a student project, but never used. Frequency counter, it was going to bin it, but uh, a little tear down. 40 Atmel micros, woohoo! And a DSP, old school TI DSP kit, yes. And a gold pick, here's an oldie chip you can see inside without smashing, etching, or cutting. Old, v, old school UV erasable pick, yes, for those youngsters out there. Uh, noobs who, uh, yeah, back in the old days, picks, here it is, used to be UV erasable. None of this electrical. Uh, erasing rubbish, which was the 16C84, I think, was the first electrical erasable pick. You used to have to put them under the UV light. Oh, yeah, look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Ah, oh, yes, old school die, old school UV erasable die. Love it. Straight through the clear window, quartz window on the top. Fantastic. Those were the days. And chips in an old school bubble pack. Look at that, you don't see those too often these days. I love it, pop them like pills. And it comes from Element 14 slash Farnell. And these are AT Mega 48s 20 AUs for those playing along at home. And it's a frequency counter. Look at that from SAJE Electronics. Never heard of them, the SC40 frequency counter. 5 hertz to 50 megahertz and 40 megahertz to 400 megahertz dual range, little uh, membrane thing with a LCD on it. That looks like a uh, dot matrix. That looks like a uh, 16 character by one line matrix. And look, serial number, that's probably 173A. Wonder what the A is for. Look at that. Totally old school or dip package in there. Got some front end uh, stuff happening around here, of course. But yeah, not much else. I'll take the uh, lift the skirt up on that in a minute. But we've got some 74 uh, ACT uh, logic, there's some 74HC stuff on there, some 74ACT161 and a yeah, bunch of discrete transistors for the front end and Bob's your uncle. Definitely old school, pick 16C57, excellent. Uh, ninth week, 1993, so over 20 years old, brilliant. And the front end there contains a TFK893. Don't know it offhand, probably some sort of uh, comparator. Couldn't immediately find a data sheet for that sucker, but yeah, you know, just your basic crude, uh, cheap frequency counter front end. We've got ourselves an Agilent uh, fiber optic um, kit. Look at that. There we go. Not a huge amount in there. We've got ourselves the cable and a couple of connectors. Not a terribly exciting kit. There's no, you know, demo board to pass data through or anything. Oh. We've got ourselves some 3M wet or dry uh, paper here for polishing the uh, fibre ends. So, yeah, eh, fibres aren't that exciting, really. People think they're amazing technology. It's just a piece of glass, really. That's it. You polish the ends and you shoot uh, light through and, well, Bob's your uncle. Yeah, I know. There's a lot of technology behind it, but meh, it's a piece of glass. So thanks, Andy, for that interesting little score. And he's channel engineer on YouTube. And this one's from someone with four names, Samuel Lorenko from Portugal. Hi to all my Portuguese viewers. Don't get many from Portugal. So that's excellent. Wonder how many viewers I've got in Portugal. I don't know. Not a huge amount, but I'm sure there's a nice small contingent there. It, uh, I don't think Portugal is on my top ten list in YouTube anyway. Here we go. Got a note. We've got a postcard from 
Portomeo. Excellent. Thank you for years of EEV blog. No worries, Samuel. Now, what do we got? Not fragile, but handle with care. Let's have a look. Oh, we've got ourselves a little interface board of some description. And Samuel sent uh, what he calls the Pixel. It's a breakout board based on a PIC 12F683. Uh, it also contains an ICSP header. Um, handy when programming the PIC. Yes, with a PIC kit 2 or 3, of course. Excellent. And there we go. I'll link in the website down below for those who are interested. Blink, blink without delay. There we go. We have the made up version and the kit version for those who want to do it yourself. And yeah, a little handy. Uh, just plug it into your breadboard and away you go with your ICP header. Very handy if you just want to use a low end pick. And that just plugs nicely into your breadboard. Excellent. Thanks, Samuel. And this one's from Nick, courtesy of Marshall from the USA. Is that Marshall, the like uh, amplifier company? Anyway, um, Nick is a fellow Aussie. So it's only come local. It's got one of these aw uh, awful padded GIF. Look, this is what I'm talking about. I hate these things. They're awful, evil, 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 evil things. And of course, idiot me tried to cut it open. One of these horrible bags. And uh, yeah, of course, it's got the rip pull. If I can get access to the uh, tab to pull it. There we go. Ta -da! And we should be able to access we're in like Flynn we have some padding we've got a plug pack and that's all she wrote it's inside Ooh. Ooh. what is that zip tie wireless zip it wireless messenger 2 Whoa. Sense another uh, old school <laughs> product. Oh, look at that. Oh, ta da. That's just gold. Imagine carrying one of those puppies around. It's booted. It's booted. Your battery level is running low. Your zip it will have to shut down. Unless. Ta -da. Welcome to Zip It Wireless Messenger 2 setup. That's a pretty high res color screen, actually. That's really amazing. I mean, some engineer has probably gone, or a bunch of engineers, gone to a lot of trouble, you know, to design and uh, and build and get this sucker into production. And it probably was a dismal failure just looking at it based on, you know, its life, if it was a success, its lifespan would have been, you know, nine months at best or something like that. Zip it wireless. I'm still not sure what it does. It's like a wireless messenger texty thing. I don't know. All right, the battery has uh, suddenly come good. What it is, is a 2007, uh, 2005 vintage is the original model. This is the model uh, 2, and it's 2007 vintage. It is, as its name says, a wireless messaging device designed to hook up with AOL, Yahoo, and MSN Messenger, and it can also send SMS messages via uh, a Wi-Fi connection as well and uh yeah probably had a very short <laughs> lifespan if it was a success at all um it's a pretty powerful beast it's got an x scale uh processor in it the pxa 270 running at 312 megahertz it's got 32 mega ram and yes it's running linux and uh apparently people have hacked these things and run their own uh version of linux on it and used it as a little portable linux device i mean you know it's not like it has any standard uh you know usb ports or anything like that but it's got a uh, little that's not even an SD card what is that anyway it's you know it's got some sort of universal universal connector on the back things like that little DC I mean it doesn't even have you know standard USB for charging or anything like that just a DC jack really quite annoying but anyway um yeah next to continue where's the next button there's the next several shouldn't get to know my friends yay is it, that's the button down here that's the my friends button is used to enter instant messaging mode so there you go next scanning for wireless networks it's probably going to find it and look at that it's found the nsa surveillance network they're everywhere folks really be careful of those black vans and remember what they say it's not paranoia if they're really out to get you hmm and we're connecting to the NSA surveillance network. I wonder what we'll get. Our little friendly faces spinning around. That auto time off is very quick. Obviously, they're paranoid about their uh, 
about their battery life there. It's taken ages to connect to the network. It's not worth doing a teardown of this thing. I mean, there's going to be nothing in it. There's going to be an LCD driver if it's not already built into the X scale process. There's going to be the X scale process, some battery management, um, charging, and well, you know, a little Wi Fi thing. I don't think it's worth doing a teardown. If anyone really desperately wants to see down, uh, no, no, couldn't connect. So, this is a classic example of one of those products that. I can almost say, you know, it wasn't a success, I suspect. Um, but hey, they lasted at least a couple of years. They got their seed funding and they developed this thing or whatever it was uh, back in the day. And well, where are they now? The company who manufactured this have no idea. But anyway, um, yeah, sort of, you know, a niche device that was always going to have sort of, you know, with the march of technology, and well, with hindsight, the march of technology and everything else. Hello. Ta-da. There I am. Um, yeah, it, it would just, you know, one of those sort of uh, failed products because, you know, mobile phones became the integrated device and that was just the end of that. So, uh, it's all she wrote. Who remembers this thing? This in the uh, time period of the day, I guess. What is this, like 2005 for the first version? They probably uh, started designing and found the company in 2004, got some seed funding somewhere or something like that to develop the thing. And, well, mobile phones just you know, probably didn't have the capability to do, uh, uh, to connect to the messaging services you were used to on your desktop computer if you had an internet connection back then. Most people did, really, around about uh, that vintage 2005. Yeah, it's pretty good. Um, hey, but even, like, YouTube wasn't around then, I don't think. So, let alone Facebook or anything else, but back then, the messaging services, those AOL, Yahoo, MSN type messaging services were a big deal, and you probably couldn't do those on the phones of the day. You just made phone calls, maybe took a photo, perhaps. Whoa. So this probably seemed like a good idea at the time, you know? And, well, yeah, it wasn't successful, probably not. And, with hindsight, doomed to failure. So, there you go. Thank you very much, Nick. That is most interesting ancient technology. And, I don't know, are these just all tossed in the bin now? There's probably very few left around.